Today's video, we're going to talk about how to get Google to promote all the rest of your items on PMAX or shopping campaigns that you're running today. If you are dissatisfied that Google's system for some reason decides to run these, you know, 20 items here, but ignores the other 80% of items on my Google Merchant Center product feed that I set up or that you set up, this video is for you specifically. I made this video because several people have asked me this question now, so I decided to make a dedicated video for it all in itself so that when this inevitably happens to you, you understand why it's happening and what to do about it to fix it, if you will. Part of the problem is something that isn't necessarily it. You should be thinking about it as a problem in general because why do you want to necessarily, you should ask yourself, why do I want to promote every item? I know a lot of you guys, the answer is, well, I have stock and I have to move that stock. And if I don't move the stock, the items are going to eventually deteriorate and I lose all my investment. And that's a very good answer to the, to that particular question. But if you know, with that said, you could, it could just be lesson learned. You got a hundred items. Do you really want to take your budget and divert it towards something that gets you a lower ROI when you could get a higher ROI over here. Yes, you'll still take a loss on those other items, but it may not offset what you're losing by ROI you could get on the items, the best movers, if you will, on your product feed at the end of the day. So with that said, I am Corey Zyman, owner of Guaranteed PPC, PPC management firm. I manage dozens of different ad accounts at any given time at our firm, and I just focus on the strategy at our firm and working for our clients. We're the only agency in the world that offers a guaranteed result for our clients. That is an increase in profitability from their campaigns up front before we take a fee. And so with that information, I am sharing with you the most relevant information you can find on this topic and that you could find from any YouTuber on here on YouTube. So what I'm gonna share with you here is what you can do about this as mentioned and what, and to put it in the frame of reference, why it happens so you do not have these issues and have the answer for moving forward with the one, two, three, four step process that I have for you to fix this. And by the end of the video, I'm also gonna point out what it is that you stand to gain by actually following these actions in terms of a return, promoting all your items versus promoting some of your items. And so you can see, you know, make the decision as to, do I wanna go fully with this? Do I wanna promote all of my items? All my items or do I wanna just promote some of them? I will tell you and give you some real actual case studies of different companies where one, somebody's done one and done the other, okay? So getting into the content. I've asked, uh, been asked so many times this question, why is it that Google's only promoting some of the items and not others? Google doesn't have to work like we expect them to. The sooner you realize as an advertiser, Google has their own business, their business, first and foremost, despite what you probably think already and what other people may have told you, they is making money, yes, but they want people to use Google. Just like Facebook wants people to stay on their platform, just like Instagram wants people to stay on their platform, just like Twitter wants to, people to stay on their platform. Google wants people to stay on their platform. Secondarily to that, ideally in their world, they want people to click on ads instead of the organic results because that actually makes them money and, and fuels goal number one. And so with that said, it's not just the person who has the most money that they want to promote in the ad space. It's the person who gives the user what they want so that people are more likely to click on an ad in the future, building in long-term viability of their ad product there, okay? Same thing if you're running YouTube ads, same thing if you're running display ads. They just prefer to run the ads that people like seeing and they buy from and that all that. So if you're really at the end of the day, as an advertiser, all you're trying to do is just do that better than the competition in your niche area. Because if you do, Google's gonna wanna promote you first and foremost, reward you with lower cost per click, better quality, more likely to convert users, more users in general, which all actually will happen once you have a better ad that gets a better click-through rate than your competition and a better landing page or site to take them to that has a better conversion rate than your competition. That said, there are some items that you know, ultimately are gonna sell well and there's gonna be some items that don't based upon what people come to Google, what and don't want, what they are what they find appealing and not find appealing because your item based upon the look alone may not be as appealing as the other products that are next to it. 
And Google's machine learning process are just going to throw your products up there. And if people aren't clicking through it at the same rate that the other ads are, that are showing, it's not going to show it anymore. Furthermore, it's going to, um, you know, depending on what kind of return it has, decide to show that item versus not show that item. But even before then, it just looks at the pure click-through rate of that uh, product and that ad alone as an indication of whether or not it, it's worthy of being shown to the people that come to Google for them and that you want. The more you treat Google like a love interest, the more you'll be successful with your Google account and in general getting to the goal of making millions of dollars with Google ads for your business. You want to be able to impress Google. Google isn't there to impress you. Of course, they want to, they really will love you back if you can make them love you, but they are automatically going to give you that love. What can you do to get Google want to send every last user they can to you so that they will want to show your products as much as possible? Not only that, but every product that's on your product feed or as many as possible, you do that by having the best products, the best ads that get the best metrics that their algorithm sees that you have a, you're a good seller, you have something that's attractive. The image, for instance, uh, that of your product that looks appealing, has a good price, that which makes your product more appealing than the competition because it's not about whether it's appealing or not. It's are you as uh, appealing as the competition that also wants to show up for the same people you do? If you are more appealing as a whole, Google wants to show you. If you're not, they don't. And respectively, 20% of the market in your niche that's advertising are going to make 80% of the money because they're going to try to send as much traffic to the top guys, if you will, as they can. And that's going to be the reality because you know there's eight people in the shopping ad spot, but there's more than eight that they're cycling in and out of those spots, by the way. Not only that, and even if there's not, let's say there's only five, as you already know, in those shopping spots, you could be five of the eight just from one guy. And so if they see that you're a good advertiser that makes good images that, you know, like for instance, what a lot of people will do is they'll have a product on a white background and so will everybody else. But somebody will invest in lifestyle images where they'll put that product on a picnic table in a, in a camping setting or they'll put it in a living room. And that in and itself is different and also is more it kind of more appealing than the user than everybody else has. So then Google will see that, oh, that's a great Ad that gets a great click through. Let's show two products up from this uh, particular advertiser for this search result and see if that'll get even more click through rate out of this ad space for this particular search than we had before. Oh, that worked. Well, let's try to put three. Oh, let's try to put four. Oh, let's try to put five. And it'll go to the theoretical limit with it. Because all it's trying to do is just optimize for how can we get more users to click these ads than the organic results. They're going to try anything and everything to try to get more click-through rate on their ads because that's going to make them more money, baby. And if you want to be able to then get shown multiple times, more often, for more items, you need to figure out how to be a better advertiser, basically, bottom line. So with that said, the best way to then call attention to some items that aren't getting any love from Google in terms of getting shown, you just it doesn't make any logical sense why they, you know, because what frustrates people the most is, is there's items that only got like a few impressions and then it, Google just stopped. One thing you got to keep in mind, in mind though, however, is on a limited budget, they can only advertise so many. So if your campaign, first of all, right off the top is showing limited by budget, they're going to pick certain items and play favorite with them by default. And so if you want them to, to test out items that are unproven, given it knows that it has items that are proven or more proven than other items, you need to up your budget and make it an unlimited budget so that Google runs more, the ads more often than they do. Then you may not like that. You may just want them to spend your $30 a day and distribute it across all items equally, but it never is going to do that if you have all those items in the same campaign. So, which by the way, if you want ultimately to understand how to actually get Google to, you know, all, um, you know, because if you do a good job as an advertiser, they're going to lower your cost per click. That is, have a high click through rate and high conversion rate on your ads. That's going to make your $30 a day go further. It's going to get you more impressions for the same budget, then it can start to show more items. If you don't want to spend more money, then you got to know how to do those things. How, and then with that, it's how can I make the image better? How can I make the price more uh, optimized to get higher click-through rate? How can I optimize the title using Google Merchant Center promotions? I talk about all that on different videos on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, you should already, because the information I'm sharing with you on this particular channel 
comes from somebody who spent 20 years running ads and 10 years doing it at a dedicated ad firm that does nothing but run online ads for different clients and hundreds of them at that and share with you exactly what's worked and what hasn't worked given I'm the one working directly on the strategy at our firm to find out exactly what works and what doesn't work. So you should subscribe if you actually want this. Uh, furthermore, if we've already worked in your niche space before, we can bypass all of this learning for you. We can already tell you what works in your space. Um, you should reach out to me and find out if we've sold something similar to what you have, because if so, I can tell you and give you the templates of what works in your space already, whether that, uh, or, and then with that, should I say, the formula that works, the image that works, the image style that works for shopping or PMAX campaigns, the pricing strategy, and so forth. And we can tell you that information as a one-time fee, and then you'll just bypass most of what you have to learn on your own. But getting back into the content here, if you want to have those items be shown more and get it to where it shows them more right away, other than raising your budget, you can actually change the ROAS bidding strategy on your campaign or put a different ROAS bidding target, if you will, or switch the bidding strategy. So the one thing I've seen people do is they'll run a TCPA bidding strategy, the target cost per conversion. Certain items that are cheaper are gonna get a lower target cost per conversion. So if you have that right off the bat, that's the wrong setting to have. It's never gonna give the items that are more expensive love because they're gonna have a higher cost per conversion. They'll get the same ROI as the cheaper items or better, but they're not gonna get a cheaper cost per conversion. So you have to switch your bidding from target CPA to target ROAS bidding. From there, if you have target ROAS bidding already, then the lower the target ROAS you set, the more aggressively that campaign's gonna run, and the higher you set, the less aggressive it's gonna run. And even though your campaign's not saying limited by budget, if that target ROAS you have is set really, really high, like way higher, in other words, than what the ROAS of that campaign's already getting the last 30 days, then it's not gonna run your all of your products aggressively or at you know only some versus not, uh, not others because it's trying to be as efficient as possible, which the easiest way to do that for them is just to pick the items that already got a good ROI. So that's one way to fix it. Uh, you, the other way to fix it is to do a breakout campaign because a lot of times what I just said won't fix it all the way. You can do a breakout campaign. So you literally just take the items, in other words, that don't get any love from Google right now and don't get shown very much or at all, at all. put them into its own PMAX or shopping campaign, which by the way, PMAX is gonna work better than shop, regular shopping if you do a feed only setup, at least long-term, because of the increased machine learning capacity that Pmax has with it, it's something we're gonna use by default, not regular shopping. Unless, for instance, you needed to get profit right away, and regular shopping can sometimes help short-term for that because you can add a lot more negative keywords and see the search terms better, what the ad actually shows up for. But with that said, you can do a separate campaign, whether you're doing regular shopping or Pmax to run your shopping campaign with the feed only, by the way, gets it to only show up in the shopping placements, by deleting the headlines and you know the video ad and all that in the Pmax, it only shows up in shopping. So you get the machine it increased machine learning capacity of Pmax working for you, but without having to have all the downside of having the your ads run on Google Display Network and so on and so forth. But uh, with that said, okay, set up a separate campaign to run those items in shopping, whether it's through Pmax or standard shopping. The system will have no choice but to try to run those items, obviously. And still at that point in time, if you're gonna have the same ROI goal as the other campaign that you took the items out of, that was that you were trying to run those items through before, you may have the end result. So what I would do in that case, if you really wanna run the ads for a while, because ultimately here, you know, what happens with Google ads and why people don't get results is they expect results too quickly. There's 10% in there of the traffic that Google sent to that item or could send to that item or group of items that don't get shown now that would be profitable if you could just find out where it is. Well, you don't know where it is until you've advertised for a while with your tracking setup to find out where it is. And so if you're not willing to run your campaign for a loss to find out that where that 10% is, you're just never going to get to profitability for those items. So if you're getting a 400% roar as on that existing campaign that you took your items that were getting shown in and put it into its own campaign, and then you take the the target ROAS that you want on that new campaign to 100% right away, then right away Google's gonna start showing those items almost for sure at that point in time. And the best way along with that strategy, that breakout strategy I just gave you there to keep things in check so that you're not going to run out of money, if you will, in your business to keep financing Google Ads as a whole is to put a daily budget on that campaign that's 10% of what the original campaign is. That way they're gonna get shown, but not so much still, 
because you're going to get a lower ROI on those campaign on the, on those products, but you're keeping the budget that you're spending on the learning of those products, if you will, in check enough that you're not going to notice a dip in your profitability of your total investment into Google ads, but still while slowly building up some data on those items. So eventually down the road, you're going to have those items be profitable for you, whether that be three months down the road, six months down the road, whatever. There's a lot of details obviously to this to get right. And I'm giving you all the information as best as I can. However, I could give you this information. It's not going to cover every small detail and everything and anything. And if you do all this stuff and you have, you're struggling with it, you can always obviously leave a question down in the comment section and I'll be able to respond to you for free. More than happy to do that for viewers of this channel. However, if you do need somebody to just tell you based upon everything you got, you know, obviously you would, I recommend you contact me at my firm at guaranteedppc.com. You can reach out and I can give you that information you need in a quick session. Or if you want somebody that gets you the guaranteed results that you're looking for, we can do that for you and tell you what kind of results we can get with your campaign up front before we take a management fee because that's what we do at our agency and what we're doing that's different than everybody else. And that may be getting you sales on a certain grouping of items like we're talking about in this video. Uh, but you know, to get that process started and to see what kind of results we could give for you, you would have to obviously reach out. You can find me at guaranteedppc.com. Look at that um, and decide if you know it works for you or not. The information about what we can get for you is offered for free, so there's no drawback to just you know reaching out and having a conversation about it. But going back to the topic at hand here, that's the strategy, if you will, to get the items shown by Google and like force them to show it, show them in general. Like I said before, just because though your items are not getting shown, it isn't necessarily a bad thing. You have to run items at a loss to have the algorithm that Google has find where your customers actually is within the mass of people that may search for that item, but to find you know the five or ten percent that actually buy at a good enough rate that it's profitable for you to get in front of those people. Uh, when you have a limited budget, you may not want to. I mean, if you're already, let's say, you need a thousand percent ROI in your campaign and you're getting it, but it's getting it on certain items. Why devote 10% of your budget on those items that aren't moving to try to sell them when all that's going to do is bring your total ROI on your investment from 1,000 to 900%. You're actually, there's no reason to do that. And until you cannot scale that campaign, that is raise your budget 10, 20% at a time on that campaign that's getting 1,000% ROI and then have the ROI stay where it's at, until you can't do that anymore, it would make no sense to try to get these other items that aren't moving to try to move by devoting budget that's going to something that's already working good enough to something that you know has to go through a learning mode if you will so there's not a benefit just you know what i i guess what i feel is the reason why i say this is because i feel like a lot of people just they want to see the other items move because they think they might do well and when they aren't moving it's because google's for the most part their algorithm realizes they're not good sellers now if you have stock that has to move no matter what you can use the breakout strategy but just don't fall into the trap of emotionally feeling like, oh, I like these items, so therefore customers should buy them. Therefore, why isn't Google moving them? The customer is the customer. The customer has their own mind. Google's not doesn't have their own mind. They just tell you what the customer wants. If the customer doesn't want your damn items, quit trying to ram them down their throat. You know, you got to be pragmatic as an advertiser and as a businessman or woman in order to make money. Be unemotional about what's working and what's not working, and you'll be the best off that way. The last thing you can do to make Google run your campaign, your products that aren't getting love now to run them more aggressively is to do high bidding targets and high budgets temporarily. So I mentioned earlier, you could just raise the budget on your campaign if it's saying limited by budget, and then the items that aren't getting shown will probably start getting shown. But along with that, you probably will have to raise that target ROAS bid from where it's at now to a higher amount, or sorry, should I, should I say a lower amount? Let's say your roar as that you're getting on that campaign, that Pmax or shopping campaign is 400%, and it's set at 400%, right? You may have to go to 200% temporarily for 90 days, and also along with that, rate doubling the daily budget on that campaign in order for the products that aren't getting shown to get shown. Usually, when I tell pe uh, our clients at our firm that we have to do what I just told you in order to get those items shown, given I don't like to break out items into a separate campaign because that separate campaign is going to have to go through a learning mode. And then I want all my learnings to be compacted into that campaign because I don't want to water down everything. All the, the learnings are your wealth of that account. And when you spread it out over 50 campaigns, you're just, it's not as effective as to getting it all into one campaign, assuming 
that it makes sense to, because sometimes you have different campaigns because you're targeting different countries or you have different ad copy and you definitely still want to do that. But if, in, in terms of a shopping or PMAX, I'm going to run everything in the same campaign unless there's a strong reason not to, so I can concentrate my learnings on, on that campaign. But anyway, going back to what I was saying, basically when I tell my clients that we have to cut the ROI and raise the daily budget to get the items shown, they don't like it. They just expect Google search damn well show them and they should damn well sell them because those are good items in their eyes and they should move and that's it. And again, going back to the golden rule here, if you treat Google like a girl or a guy that you're trying to court, you're gonna, that's, you're gonna be the best off because they have their own mind. You try to play to their wants and needs best they can so they make a decision about you that is favorable to you. There's no forcing anything with Google. The system is the way that it is. It will remain the way that it is. You can feel any way, which way you want about it, but it's going to, at the end of the day, work the way that it is because they don't need you. Fundamentally, I mean, the, the truth is they don't need you. There's 12 other guys who want the customers that they're giving you in your market. And there'll always be somebody behind you to take these customers one way or another. Now, that said, when you blow away the other advertisers, like I said, and you have a better click-through rate and a better conversion rate than them, they want to do everything they can to keep you around. But at the end of the day, if you're just an average everyday Joe, Joe Blow, they don't really care what you think. Because there's somebody else in line that can do a half-assed job with their ads to send the traffic to, their, their leftover remnants that they don't want to send to their top guys. And that's just how it is. You may not like that, but the days of you know, TV advertising, radio ads, where they actually had to treat you like an actual human being are over. Nobody at Google cares what you think, practically speaking, unless you spend like a million dollars a month. You're 10 grand a month, they, you're, you're a piece of crap to them still. Anyway, so what that might be your other option. Then finally you have, going back, you know, what I was saying, what you could do to also, if you don't, if you don't like the idea and it's left a bad taste in your mouth about you having to be a better advertiser to that you have to raise your budget in order to get these other items you want to show to get shown. If you don't want to raise your budget, then your answer is just to be better. So the algorithm lowers your cost per click so you get more clicks and more showings per your budget. Frankly, the easier way to do that is generally focus on having your product pages that you're sending traffic to be better. People don't like that because they think, oh, I just need to send a different ad, uh, you know, the ad needs to show up in a different place or whatever. And sometimes that can be helpful, but you, it's almost universally easier to make your product page better than find out how to run your campaign more efficiently because there's universal things you can add to your product page that you don't have now that once you add them, they'll almost always convert better. And once you've done that, everything else is going to happen. You know, your cost per click is going to come down. You're going to get more showings per your budget. And that's just the way that it is. And when I say universal things, I've got videos on this channel about how to make a good landing page, an e-commerce landing page, all of it. A lot of times that comes down to if you've got high moving product coming up with a dedicated landing page to send them to that all it just sells. And when the user wants to buy, then, then they click through that landing page and they go to the page on your site where they can actually buy it. If you're selling anything over a few hundred bucks, you, that's, you're throwing away money not doing that. And if you go to my site at guaranteeppc.com and then look at our landing page portfolio, you can see product landing pages where we've done exactly that. So you can understand what kind of, you know, what to model there. But with that said, you know, customer video testimonials, um, video demonstrations, uh, you know, demonstrations that show the difference between your product and your competitor's product. Um, showing a product in the wild. That is, if you're selling a, a, a camping grill, you show it in campgrounds. Or if you're selling a mailbox, showing the mailbox in, box installed in several places. These are all, and I could give you a, a big long list actually of different things that'll almost universally always increase your conversion rates so that you're, you'll be able to get more showings of your products and ads per your same budget you have now. But people don't like hearing that because they don't want, that all takes work and it takes money to to go and get, get, you know, it takes money to go hire a actor or, you know, whatever to model with the product and hire, hire a videographer or photographer. At the end of the day, it sounds cheap, but it starts adding up. It might cost to take one product page and make it significantly better to where it converts twice as well. You might have 20 grand worth of content to pump out to get it there in terms of hiring that person to go talk to 20 customers so you can get four really solid video testimonials. And then also add with that a 
side-by-side -side product comparison between you and your competitors' products, where you buy all your competitors' products and you durability test them, and then you show it side-by-side -side on video, and you have that as a part of being able to see, you know, on your product page. But if you, all this stuff is very straightforward. If you just want to know how to do it, then you can bet your bottom dollar that that will increase your showings because it's going to increase your conversion rates, which will then decrease your cost per click, get you more showings for the same money, and that will get more products shown. Not only that, but if you make the product pages on the items that don't get shown, also do that. I wouldn't necessarily do that first because if an item doesn't get shown, you can increase that landing page quality all you want. It's not going to get any traffic. The algorithm's not going to see it's better, so you're wasting your time. But um, ultimately, if you do that on some, some products, you'll get more clicks per your budget, and then you work your way and get the products that aren't getting shown, do those landing pages better. Naturally, those products can go from Google saying, eh, it's not quite as good as the others to we need to send as much traffic to this as we can because our users love this. And that is where you want to be with all of this. And yes, it's not cheap or easy to do. However, if it were cheap and easy to do, it wouldn't be nothing in life that's cheap and easy is worth doing. At the end of the day, that is the way that everything rolls. This is no different. If you want users to buy from you, you have to do something to get them to buy from you. And generally speaking, it's making it less confusing to buy, less risky to buy. And you do that by being more transparent and spending money to arrange that content that you have because you can't just dump a metric ton of content on a page and expect users to get through it. It's still got to be as simple that a 10-year-old kid could understand what it is that you're trying to convey while you're doing it all, which a lot of people don't understand this. If you don't know what I'm talking about or really want to know what I'm talking about, you go out and you buy the book, Don't Make Me Think. It's book that I read 20 years ago when I started to get into web marketing that still applies today because the user psychology is never going to change. It's going to be the same way 60 years from now. Got to make things simple, provide resources for people to get all the information they want, but without bogging the user down that normally doesn't need it at the same time. That's a very delicate balance you have to learn how to do if you want to be really good at web marketing, but it is what it is and that's not going to change. So um, with all that said, like I said, if you have questions about this, you can leave me a comment below uh, and I can, uh, and can get back to you about that. But basically speaking, if you want to know how to get more showing without spending more money, you got to be better. This channel, you subscribe to it. It has information from myself who spends 40 hours a week doing ad testing and strategy to tell you what works and what doesn't work so you could get these results for yourself and get more showings per your budget for, oh, and on the items that you want to get shown more. You can go to my blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog and I and also see a lot more visual strategies there. I have screenshots and all that. So if, again, if you want to know how to do it better, then that's the other place you want to go and it's all free, of course, and it comes from an actual expert, not somebody who spends all their time making a YouTube channel. They don't run no ads or barely any and they're just trying to sell you a course, which is 99% of the information on YouTube. You check those out. You start paying attention to the real information that is coming from somebody actually doing it 40 hours a week, you study it, you put that stuff into, uh, into your account, into your site, you start getting more showings or you just brute force it and you spend the money, you take the lazy approach, if you will, you just throw a ton of money at it and Google will start showing it and then eventually they're going to be able to find your customer within the total universe of people that could buy and then you'll get showing on those items and it'll be regular before them. But short term, if you don't tell Google you're willing to run a loss on those items and spend money on those items while they're while Google's learning how to promote them, you're never going to get over the initial hump of getting to that, that promised land where Google's system knows what customers buy and they can deliver at a decent ROI, and an ROI that matches what the other items that you're selling now already get, if you will. So hopefully that makes sense, what I shared with you here today. If you do actually do a good job where your ads are getting a higher click-through rate and a higher conversion rate than your competition. You literally can take things from 100 and 200% ROI with what you're doing now to 1000% ROI. Not only that, or if you wanted to go the other way, you could take something that's get generating $300,000 a year in sales to 3 million. Why? Because the shopping space, if you will, on Google will start showing instead of one item, it'll show up to five. And we'll regularly get that going. And so if you're happy with your ROI now, you can get you could scale your campaign way more just instead of being in the middle of the pack in terms of ad click-through rate and conversion rate of your product pages to the 
you're in the top, you're the top one in your niche space. That's the kind of difference it makes, if you will. We've done this, uh, we sold house paint this way. You know, the difference between going ahead and optimizing the product images to uh, show, you know, a lifestyle image versus a white background, we were able to get those kind of results. Just to give you one simple example of this. That in uh, the Google Merchant Center promotions where you show a discount on the item, which is something that most people should do, but most people don't want to do because they don't want to discount their items. It's worth it to just mark your product price up a little bit so you can offer that uh, as skeezy, if you will, as that may be. Um, to give you another example, we sold a uh, luxury mailbox as well. So, and then with that, just you know, identifying, again, um, what's the pricing strategy? Going ahead and taking the product price and the ones that are close to, and we have you know, a bunch of different SKUs, items that are close to $2,000 there, marking it to $1,900 and some dollars, getting substantially more click-through rate on our ad and conversion rate that way. That's number one. Also being able to lace the product titles, in that case specifically, so that people that were looking for that style of mailbox could easily find it and it's showing up in the right places instead of Google not understanding our customer that well and somebody looking for a beige color box and when they're using that in the key in the search because our product has the word beige in it, not just brown, if you will, we get a lot higher click-through rate, a lot higher conversion rate. And so in that instance, right, we were able to more than 3X the ROI of that particular campaign. So in that case, we just simply wanted to get the ROI better because it wasn't good enough in the paint situation, ROI was good. Well, we wanted to scale and we were able to scale way more than what we were able to scale before without optimizing what I, you know, the images and the, all that that I mentioned. So anyway, with that said, that gives you a frame of reference of how much this stuff can make and will matter. Go ahead and check out my other videos and other content on my site, guaranteeppc.com slash blog, and you can learn how to do this for yourself. And then get Google to voluntarily want to run as many items as they can, see that Every single item that they promote, it's like a home run for their users. So the other 20% of what they don't run right now, they're going to test it just because, and this is the way that it legitimately works. If something works good here, they're going to assume this works over here. If it doesn't work here, they're going to assume this item doesn't work as good. So you, it's a waterfall effect. The better a job you do as an advertiser, the more they're going to, of your stuff, they're going to want to run and vice versa. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll wrap it up with that.